Hi everyone, we'll continue with the diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of SARS coronavirus 2 in this lecture. One of the main problems of the COVID 19 pandemic is that disease symptoms are diverse and may have varied manifestations among the patients. Some symptoms are incredibly severe, while others are so mild that patients appear asymptomatic. In severe cases, a typical pattern of disease progression occurs. However, patients with mild disease may show signs of recovery after the first week, but some may have persistent symptoms or may deteriorate again rapidly thereafter. The most common COVID-19 symptoms tends to appear in about 2 to 14 days after virus exposure, which include fever, muscle pain, headache, cough, sore throat, and the loss of taste or smell. In severe cases, due to overwhelming lung infection, emergency signs arise including difficulty in breathing due to the pneumonia. Infection and viral dissemination are associated with end organ diseases. As its name suggests, SARS coronavirus 2 is known to affect the patient's lungs, often inducing ARDS. However, clinicians and researchers around the world have reported the devastating effects of COVID-19 on other major organs, including blood vessels, brain, gastrointestinal tract, kidney, heart, and liver. Clinical diagnosis mainly includes physical examination and imaging examination. Physical examination. Patients with mild symptoms may not present positive signs. Patients in severe condition may have shortness of breath, moist rills in lungs, weakened breath sounds, dullness in percussion, and increased or decreased tactile speech tremor, etc. Imaging examination includes chest X-ray examination and chest CT scan. In the early stage of pneumonia cases, chest images show multiple small patchy shadows and interstitial changes, remarkable in the lung periphery. Severe cases can further develop to bilateral multiple ground glass opacity, infiltrating shadows and pulmonary consolidation with infrequent pleural effusion. Pulmonary lesions are shown more clearly by CT than X-ray examination, including ground glass opacity and segmental consolidation in bilateral lungs, especially in the lung periphery. There have been two types of laboratory diagnosis for COVID-19 during this pandemic. One type is PCR tests. As a molecular diagnostic technique based on viral genetic material, that can diagnose an active COVID-19 infection. The early detection of COVID-19 via PCR depends on the presence of a sufficient amount of viral genome in the patient sample and the sensitivity of the RT-PCR assay. So optimized or screening methods that able to detect the SARS coronavirus to even in low viral titers are fairly necessary. The other type is serological tests based on antibodies against the viral proteins. Serological tests identify people who have developed an adaptive immune response to the virus as part of an active or prior infection. Three types of antibodies, including IgG, IgM, and IgE, may be detected in response to the virus, especially IgM, which is produced early after the infection. This table shows the potential antiviral therapeutics for experimental treatment of COVID-19. In patients with COVID-19, hydroxychloroquine decreases the inflammatory response and cytokine storm, but overdose causes toxicity and mortality. Neuromenides inhibitors are invalid for such coronavirus 2 and are not recommended for treatment. But protease inhibitors such as lapinavir, ritonavir, inhibit the progression of MERS coronavirus disease and can be useful for patients of COVID-19. And in combination with arvadol, 
has a direct antiviral effect on early replication of SARS coronavirus. Favipiravir increases clinical recovery and reduces respiratory problems and has a stronger antiviral effect than LPVR. Currently, appropriate treatment for patients with COVID-19 is an angiotensin-converting enzyme to inhibitor and a clinical problem-reducing agent such as FPV in addition to hydroxychloroquine and corticosteroids. Understanding adaptive immunity to SARS coronavirus 2 is important for vaccine development. Interpreting COVID-19 pathogenesis and collaboration of pandemic control measures. Using HLA class 1 and 2 predicted peptide megaprose. Circulating SARS coronavirus 2 specific CD8 positive and CD4 positive T cells were identified in about 70% and 100% of COVID-19 coalescent patients, respectively. CD4 positive T cell responses to spike, the main target of most vaccine efforts, were robust and correlated with the magnitude of anti sars coronavirus to IgG and IgA titers. For CD8 positive T cells, spike and M were recognized with at least 8 sars coronavirus to ORF targeted. Importantly, SARS coronavirus 2 reactive CD4 positive T cells were detected in 40% to 60% of unexposed individuals, suggesting cross reactive T cell recognition between circulating common cold coronaviruses and SARS coronavirus 2. The six major types of candidate vaccine for COVID 19 are illustrated. Live attenuated virus, recombinant viral vector, inactivated virus, protein subunit, virus lock particles, and nucleic acid based. Showing the number of candidate vaccines that are currently under clinical and preclinical development. The nucleic acid based platform includes both mRNA vaccines and plasmid DNA vaccines. Currently, two vaccines are authorized and recommended to prevent COVID-19 in the United States. The first one, Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 BNT162B2. Vaccine is an investigational mRNA vaccine being developed by Pfizer and BioNTech to help prevent COVID-19. BNT162B2 is a lipid nanoparticle formulated, nucleoside modified RNA vaccine that encodes a perfusion stabilized membrane anchored SARS coronavirus 2 full length spike protein. BNT162B2 does not contain any live virus. The second, Moderna's COVID 19 mRNA 1273 vaccine was co developed by researchers at the NIAID Vaccine Research Center and Moderna in Cambridge, Massachusetts. This vaccine encodes a stabilized version of the SARS coronavirus 2 full length spike glycoprotein trimer, S2P, which has been modified to include the two proline substitutions at the top of the central helix in S2 subunit. The mRNA is encapsulated in lipid nanoparticles at a concentration of 0.5 mg per milliliter and diluted with normal saline to achieve the final target vaccine concentrations. With few COVID-19 cases at home, Chinese vaccine makers have had to test the effectiveness of their products overseas. Five candidates are in efficacy phase 3 trials in at least 16 countries. Casino has developed its product by using a widespread and largely harmless variant known as adenovirus 5, 85, into which they stitched a gene for the surface protein of COVID-19. Sinovac Biotech and CNBG have taken a different approach, vaccinating people with a whole killed virus. This requires no 
sophisticated protein or RNA design, or genetic engineering, scientists simply inactivate the virus with a chemical and mix it with an adjuvant that effectively puts the immune system on full alert by irritating it. In theory, such vaccines can produce broad antibody and T-cell re responses because they contain the full set of viral proteins rather than a single one, such as spike. In addition to getting vaccinated against the virus, development of basic hygienic habits it's also important in preventing the spread of the virus. Wash your hands often, avoid close contact. Cover your mouth and nose with a mask when around others. Cover coughs and sneezes. Clean and disinfect. Monitor your health daily. Okay, that's all for SARS coronavirus 2. Knowing about the virus, hopefully, you can use the knowledge to protect your health. Thank you for watching and bye.